So I think the uh, most difficult design I've ever made was actually a uh, Daft Punk helmet, Guy Manuel actually. I designed several boards for that project and they all had to do different things and I wanted to do the full face LED shroud. I ended up designing a rigid board to be flexible. So I went down to the thinnest I could make the board so that I could assemble it into essentially some sort of mold and flex them so that it would actually mirror the curvature of the face shield itself. Around a year ago, I made a PCB and um, the circuit was extremely congested. My first plan was to uh, build the PCB in two layer and at the end, it was very difficult for me to add more track on the PCB. Then I was thinking that I have to switch uh, uh, into multi-layer mode, uh, but I challenged myself that uh, somehow I have to manage the PCB in two layer. So at the end, I managed the PCB in two layer, and when it was done, then I was extremely happy that I successfully completed an uh, extremely congested PCB in two layer. So it was a very delightful experience for me. In my opinion, the most exciting design was a PCB with FPGA and radio frequency. The challenge was to design it in only six layers with different substrates. Working with different substrates and different type of line is complicated because in the PCB layer stack up, power line, high speed line and radio frequency line must be handled. Since my childhood, I was fascinated by electronics and uh, at that time, I started tinkering some household electronics uh, items uh, like radio, tape recorder and after that, I joined in electronics engineering. I started designing many electronics projects and after getting some experience, I thought uh, why shouldn't I share my project on YouTube or in social media. So then I started uploading videos on YouTube and uh, right now more than a million people love what I'm doing. I always knew I wanted to be an engineer but I think in high school in grade 10 I think it was I took a computer engineering course and I just fell in love with electronics at that point. I loved circuits. We made some 555 timer circuits as a project and it was just super fun to put it together and I ended up getting into hobby electronics at that point and started working on my own projects on the side and of course took computer engineering courses throughout high school and then when I went to university I selected electrical engineering because it's like I love electronics and electrical design and all that stuff so I wanted to go into that discipline. Rules of thumb are in everywhere, not only in physics, but also in PCB designing. But honestly speaking, I didn't care much. I only follow that what PCB manufacturer company accepts and I only follow that rules to uh, make my PCB and it works every time. Rules of thumb I think are important for any designer because you're going to get to a point where you can't really proceed forward and you don't really know what to do. So looking up some good guides online on how to design or use uh, principles for spacing, for example, especially if you're doing that from the ground up, those rules of thumb can really save your life and make it so that you can get to a first prototype and realize you know, what you did wrong. I guess when pouring planes, islands are kind of the worst thing, especially when it's like a, a false plane that has been created. Islands are very important because getting rid of things that aren't connected to anything else help you find out quicker that you're doing something wrong and that you actually need to float your ground plane into a certain area to get the proper current distribution throughout that, that plane itself. So I actually love everything that reduces our effort. If I talk about hate, actually there is nothing to hate because I love PCB design rules. I think the possibility of creating the rule and adding blocks of code such as query are very useful uh, through sometimes they can be a problem if they are used incorrectly. A great power comes a great responsibility. So 
a few years ago i was designing a pcb for one of my video it was very simple but i was in a hurry the main power supply was 220 volt and uh, the dc uh, source was 5 volt and uh, by mistake i short this 5 volt with 220 volt and after getting the pcb i was extremely excited to complete the project as soon as possible uh, so i immediately assembled the components and uh, i directly plugged the circuit board into the main source and then boom my whole circuit was destroyed that was really a, a big mistake i really learned a lot from that experience oh boy design i screwed up uh, where do I start? The most problems I had was with designing my own regulator circuits, basically going off of the engineering notes in whatever regulator I was looking for. I think when I designed one, that was easy enough to follow the design guides, but when I was putting like eight on the same board because I needed uh, regulators for eight different things, things got really bad really quickly. That was a very frustrating day, I think. I tried to pare down the board from the original size to just the control circuitry with some power circuitry and then to just the, the control circuitry and nothing was working and it was like, was it the design, was it something else, Is, am I just stressed out of my mind and making really dumb mistakes and that was, it was definitely an experience. Well, if you can trust a car with AI autopilot, then why you not trust on PCB designing? But I think the main problem will be if we completely trust on AI, then AI always try to uh, shorten the path and the component placement will not be as we expected. Sure, why not? <laughs> Easy question there. I would still want to go and look things over after but I don't see why not, especially if it's AI and not just algorithmic, because you know, more the layout and design is difficult. And I think having something else to come in and really assist you in how you put a board together might get you to your goal faster, because you know, in this industry, you need to iterate and prototype really quickly. I think what I've seen is people not treating PCB as artwork. Uh, we call it artwork for a reason because it should look nice. And if it looks nice, it's likely to work better as well. If all of your traces are you know, paired nicely and your spacings are all correct and your ground planes are flowing properly across the board, a good looking board should typically just work off the bat. And if it doesn't, it's a lot easier to actually go and trace things back because everything is laid out very clearly instead of things, you know, jumping from the top layer to the bottom layer to the top layer to the bottom layer. Like, that's impossible to try and debug something like that and you're just going to waste a lot of time. Actually, many people think that uh, PCB design is very simple when you have the circuit diagram. But that is not always true because uh, sometimes we have to face some challenges and uh, uh, to complete the challenges uh, we have to be patient because if we made one mistake and uh, we can't fix it later so we have to be cool.